Hi, welcome to Motorcycle Tours to Spain Top Tips. Camping gear today. We're going to talk about camping gear and that's likely to open up a whole can of worms. There's literally thousands of options. So I'll show you what I use and I'll hope I can sensibly justify why I've chosen to use what I have chosen to use and why over the years I've ended up with this kind of stuff. The first one's the tent. I go with a three man tent. I like the room. People can travel with a one man if that's what you want to do. Not a problem. Two man, no problem. I like three. Some of the tours we do, we have base camps. So we'll go into the, the Picos de Europa, we'll set up camp and we'll stay there for two or three nights. That means I've got a nice big tent. I can put all my boxes in and I can ride the rest of the twisties without any luggage. But even when I'm not doing that, if I'm going from A to B to C, I still like that space in there. To spread out it's comfy so three man that's top of my list the next thing is the waterproofing of the tent and that's measured in something called hydrostatic head without getting too complicated they have a column of water and they attach some fabric to the bottom of the column and see how much water they can get in the column so uh, a hydrostatic head of, of a thousand has one meter of water pressure down this tube before it starts leaking through the fabric I always choose a 5,000 hydrostatic head, which means the column of water on this fabric is five meters high. So it's about as waterproof as you can get without spending silly money on it. The next is a style. I'm not a big fan of tunnel tents. Now tunnel tents generally are a little bit lighter because they only have two poles and you, you've got to stretch out your guidelines and peg them in. And that can be a problem in Spain. The ground in Spain and Portugal can be so hard that you're not going to get a tent peg in. I like the dome or the semi geodesic tent or the fully geodesic tent. And, and all that means is how many times the poles cross. On this particular tent, there's three poles and they cross three times. Once there, once there, once on the top. And that makes for a really rigid tent, a stable tent. And that has its advantages. One of them is you can pick your tent up. So you can put the poles in it and then you can move it round and find the most suitable spot for it. And that suitable stop could be the way the land is. You want your bed nice and level. It could be to get the best view or it could be to position your tent so the prevailing wind is hitting the back of your tent. And that means if it does rain, you get any drizzle in the night, it's coming this way. So. That would be my recommendation. The next thing is we've got to get down. We've got to talk about tent pegs. That ground can be so hard that these normal lightweight aluminium pegs, they're not going to work very well. Now, I don't actually need many tent pegs with this particular model at all. But what I do carry is some tried and trusted six inch nails and even they're bent. I've had these a long time. So with this particular model, all I've got to do is peg out the front two and if I can't get a peg in the ground I could use a guy line on a rock or a brick or something like that with these six inch nails I can normally get them in somewhere so once my poles are in that's my tent set up that's all I've got to do it is quite quick as well actually if the ground is good I will probably put some more pegs out just to just to keep that a little bit more secure but I don't have to that's the beauty of the of the style of tent that I've got here. Let me just get some stuff to put inside. Another thing you need to consider when you're buying a tent is in what order do you pitch it? There's basically three ways. One way is you put the inner up first and then you put your outer over the top. That doesn't make much sense to me. If you're unlucky enough to get caught in the rain and your inner gets wet while you're putting your tent up, you then put your outer over the top and you've got a wet tent. That doesn't make any sense to me. The other way is the complete reverse of that, where you have to pitch your outer first and then you hang your inner tent after your outer's erected. Well, aren't you pitching two tents when you do that? I don't like that idea either. So what I go for is pitch together tent. And that inner stays hooked up the whole time. Uh, it's great. So if it's raining, it, it doesn't really matter. And when I finished, it all goes down together, put it in the pannier and off I go. 
Right, let me get some stuff in there. Camp bed. I did use this a few times until I realized it was a complete waste of time. Not very expensive. I think I paid 20 quid for that about five years ago. They're about 24, 25 quid now. But the weight of that is just silly. I don't take it to camp bed anymore. I don't need it. What I used to travel with was a self-inflating mattress. Sounds good, doesn't it? Self-inflating. That's really easy. Let me show you how it works. This isn't a bad make, actually. Uh, it's a Van Gogh. So what we've got in here is foam inside an airtight bag. Now what's happened is that the foam started to expand while it's in the bag. Ah. You can see why I gave up on this. I still see a lot of people use these and, and I used to think that they were the solution to a good night's sleep. I know, right? Finally, so we've got foam in here and the foam is always trying to expand. And the general idea is it can't expand because no air can get in. Then you undo the valve and leave the bed. And over five, 10 minutes, it'll start inflating. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but as that foam sucking air in, that's slowly unrolling. The problem with this is that I found is, even if you leave it for half an hour, and do the valve up, you're only sleeping on foam. There's no air in there. So to get it a little bit firmer and a bit more comfortable, you've got to blow in it. Now you're blowing damp air inside your mattress, and I don't know what the state of the inside of that is going to be like. It's just too bulky. And in actual fact, they're not that comfortable. I don't think. They take up a lot of space on the bike. They're a pain to get out the bag and then if we want to get this small again it's quite tricky there's quite a technique to ugh, rolling all the air out of this foam as you go along you've got to keep it really tight and this is a pain this takes a while in the morning the last thing i want to do is faff around unnecessarily with kit give up on that. I'll show you what I use. I've had enough of that. Here we go. This is what I wanted. My ex bed. I bought this by accident. Um, I went away last year with a couple of bikers that wanted to have a base house. So we rented the whole house, but a couple of nights I was camping. So rather than take all the big kit with me uh, for two nights, I invested in this little thing. And it's turned out to be one of the best buys I've ever made. I mean, looking at it, you think no way can that be as comfortable as that big mattress we was looking at a minute ago. Uh, but it really is. It wasn't cheap. It was 80 quid. And it's basically a glorified lilo. Some of those glorified lilos out there uh, can be 300 quid. So I know 80 sounds a lot of money, um, but in comparison, it wasn't that bad. I'll show you how it works. First of all, the beauty of it is it weighs next to nothing and it folds down really small. Then, you unroll it. <clears throat> Just here, there is a little built-in hand pump. We undo the valve, and there's a picture there for your hand. And you just sit here, maybe with a tin of beer on the go, and after a few minutes, she's done. So, while I pump that up, I'll talk about cookers. Cookers, that's another thing where you're going to get a thousand opinions on. You've also got the gas, and gas canisters come in different sizes. And I've traveled with gas canisters for years and years and years, but I've just recently changed. And there was a good reason for that. I was on a tour around Spain, it was the Devil's Breath tour actually, and I ran out of gas. 
and it was a bit of a struggle finding gas. So I thought, oh, that's not going to happen to me again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invest in the Coleman's multi-fuel stove. Now, these aren't cheap. They're about 130 quid. If you're just going away for a few nights or you're only going to make coffee in the morning, then one of those full will last you three weeks, not a problem. Obviously, it depends how much you use it. But if you're just making coffee, one of those is going to be all right. The reason I went with the Coleman's is because it takes petrol. And I can always get petrol, either out the bike or from a garage. And there's loads of garages that sell petrol. There's not always a camping shop that sells gas. So this is my breakfast setup. My stove, one litre kettle, water from the campsite, and packets of coffee. They do loads of different flavours of these, and they do vanilla and caramel, and uh, these are my favourite. My little sweeteners, that's it, lightweight cup. I can always have a cup of tea, and I think that bed's pumped up already. That didn't take long, did it? Let's get that sorted. We need to come inside the tent now, guys. That's my sleeping arrangement all set up. I've got my sleeping bag, my three season sleeping bag there. It's classed as a mummy, but you wouldn't really know unless you looked at it closely. It's a wide mummy sleeping bag. The advantage of a mummy sleeping bag, of course, they pack smaller, but the disadvantage is they can be restrictive. So I find the wide mummy uh, a good compromise. Really nice bag that is actually. I've used it ever such a lot. That white there, that's a sleeping bag liner. I always travel with a sleeping bag liner. Um, it's not a, a heat issue, it's a cleanliness issue. And that's so easy, so lightweight, so easy to, to wash. You can rinse it out, hang it up in the morning and uh, come back in the evening and that's dry. And then you, you've got a nice, clean, fresh uh, liner to sleep in. The pillows here, if you've seen the packing video I've done, you know, I take two pillows. I've got my blow up pillow underneath, which packs down really small and my fluffy pillow on top. It's one of the things I like about the mummy style is they've got this hood which your pillow can tuck into and you can get a really nice fluffy, floofy good night's sleep on that. Here's the airbed blown up. That is surprisingly comfortable. I got that actually from Go Outdoors. So what you could always do is go to Go Outdoors, pump one up and uh, lie on it for five minutes in the shop. They won't mind. Tell them I said it was okay, you'd be cool. Three man tent, yeah, I wouldn't really want to get three men in there actually, uh, but they do class it as a three man tent. There's room at the back end for my luggage, my biking gear, uh, biking boots outside under the canopy here. Uh, this is where I make a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with this setup. It's probably, over the years, it's the best setup and the best kit I've, I've had, uh, but I've been, I've been tweaking it all the time, of course. Oh, yes, look what I've just found. Found my old camping stool. I bought that at Decathlon near Malaga about 10 years ago. Really comfy stool. I like it, sturdy, but it's too big and it's too heavy. But that was my choice of seats for many years. Of course, if you've got hard luggage, you've always got your panniers to sit on and your top box as a table for a game of cards. But I was traveling a year or two ago, and one of the lads gave me this. Now, I don't know where he got it, unfortunately, but you see how lightweight and small it is? And that actually is a little stool. Look at that, that is brilliant. So now that, if I do take a stool, is what I carry with me, if I don't want to sit on top of uh, a pannier. Excellent, I wish I knew where he got it, it really is. A lovely piece of kit actually and that just folds away goes back in there if you found anything about this video useful or of interest please give us a thumbs up and uh, I'll know you appreciate it and that'll inspire me to do some more thanks for watching